Hello YouTube students, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at division of complex numbers. In particular, I want to look at the problem express 2 plus i divided by 3 plus i in a plus b i form. Now before we get started, let's take a look at what we need to solve this. We're going to need the fact that i squared equals negative 1. This fundamental definition allows us to say a lot about the complex numbers. So to try a problem like this without that definition, we wouldn't get very far. Next, we need to know what conjugates are. In particular, the conjugate of a complex number a plus bi is a minus bi. Next, we need to know what or how to rationalize the denominator. In particular, we're going to utilize this concept of conjugates in order to rationalize the denominator in this problem. And we also need to know how to multiply binomials, which is really just utilizing the distributive property, but as most teachers will show this, this is the foiling process. And next, we need to be comfortable with working with integers. We need to know how to add them, subtract them, multiply them, whether or not they're positive or negative. So let's go ahead and get started. We're looking at 2 plus i divided by 3 plus i. And what we need to do is we need to, in some sense, rationalize this denominator. So what are we going to do? We're going to multiply 3 plus i by its conjugate. And the conjugate of 3 plus i is 3 minus i. But now keep in mind, if we multiply the denominator by 3 minus i, we also need to multiply the numerator by 3 minus i. So now at the next step, what do we have? We need to multiply the binomials together. We have positive 3 times positive 3 is a positive 9. We have positive 3 times a negative i is a negative 3i. We have positive i times positive 3 is a positive 3i. And last, we have positive i times a negative i. Positive times a negative is a negative. And then we have i times i is i squared. And now we need to take care of the numerator. So we're multiplying a positive 2 times a positive 3. This is a positive 6. Now we have positive 2 times negative i. This is a minus 2i. We have a positive 3 times a positive i is a positive 3i. And last, we have positive i times a negative i is once again a negative i squared. So now, before we move to the next step, let's go ahead and look at what we need to combine. We need to combine like terms. So we have common i terms in the numerator and common i terms in the denominator. So now in the denominator, what do we have? We have a negative 3i and a positive 3i. Well, those two are going to cancel out. This is the effect we want when we rationalize the denominator. We want to, in some sense, cancel out those middle terms. And in the numerator, we have a negative 2i plus 3i. So now when we simplify, we'll go ahead and we'll simplify this first. The 3i is canceled out, the minus 3i and the plus 3i. So all that was left is 9 and now minus i squared. And now in the numerator, we have 6, a positive 6, and we have a negative 2i plus 3i. Well, really what we're looking at is negative 2 plus 3, which is a positive 1. So we're looking at a plus 1i. And keep in mind, there's also that minus i squared still left. So for the next step now, what we need to do is we need to consider the fact that i squared equals negative 1. So this allows us to substitute. So we have 6, and now instead of 1i, I'll go ahead and just write 6 plus i. And now minus i squared. So minus, instead of i squared, we'll substitute minus 1. And now in the denominator, we have 9 minus i squared. But once again, instead of i squared, we'll substitute for minus 1. But now keep in mind, once again, this is the integer part coming in. We're subtracting a negative 1. Subtracting a negative 1 is the same thing as adding 1. So we could turn this into a 6 plus i plus 1. And by the same reasoning, we could do the same thing in the denominator. And this gives us 9 plus 1 in the denominator. But now let's go ahead and combine like terms. So the next fraction, we have 6 plus 1. So we have 7, and we have that leftover plus i. Divided by 9 plus 1 which is 10. Now it's tempting to say that we're done here, but we need our answer in a plus bi form. 
So let's go ahead and break this apart into two fractions. But in order to do so, let's go ahead and think of this as one eye. We'll put that one. Uh, we'll put the one back that we took away from before. So now we could write seven over ten plus one over ten times i. And now our answer is in a plus b i form. Where we have a equals seven over ten and b equals one over ten. Now you may ask, at this stage here, a lot of students will sometimes have trouble with. Why are we allowed to break this apart into two fractions? Well, this is really just, uh, I, I go over this in a different video, but I'll go over this again somewhat quick. If we had something like 1 over 7 plus 2 over 7, you do this so fast in your head, and you'll get to 3 over 7. We do this really fast now, but we forget sometimes this middle step is 1 plus 2 divided by 7. And in math, we're so used to thinking from left to right that sometimes we need to slow down and look at this middle step and go back to the left. So this would allow us to take 1 plus 2 over 7 and break it apart back to 1 over 7 plus 2 over 7. And that's essentially what's going on here when we simplify. And now the next question that a lot of students usually have is, why do we want it in A plus B I form? Well, the way that complex numbers are defined, they're defined to be a pair of real numbers A, B, such that A plus B I would give us that complex number. So in some sense, this answer here would refer to the pair of coordinates 7 over 10, comma, 1 over 10. And the way that we would graph this as a complex number, we wouldn't necessarily look at this as x, y. This would be the a and b axis, where a is the real part of the number, and b is the imaginary part of this number. So then if we were to graph 7 over 10, we'll say that this is 7 over 10, and this is 1 over 10, we would graph it somewhere over here like this. And then later on you learn about vectors, you'll see, you'll be able to look at this as a, as a vector value. And notice how this b, the imaginary part, is the real number in front of the term i. And a is the real number that's isolated and on its own. So this is why we're interested in this A plus B I form. Okay, well that's going to conclude this problem as well as this video. Thank you all for watching and I hope that it was helpful.